We told you so. We oh. told them what was going to happen. I know, man. We predicted it. We've been saying it for like a year. We've been like, what's the next you see that going to be? Oh, yeah. I think it's a pretty easy prediction. That's Earth, what I was about to say. I was about to say. I was about to say. To be fair, a lot of people thought it was going to happen too, but yeah, we're better than. <laughs> Hello, we got a podcast. Welcome to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This is episode forty-two. I'm your host Hunter Smith. With me today is Austin and Drew. I did not prepare a, j- a joke for you this week, so you're just. Oh no, I have it. So, listener and friend of the podcast, Edward Shelton. Who hosts uh, Starting Over podcast on YouTube? It's oh another another good clicks oh clicks podcast. If you guys want to go check that out, it's only on YouTube. Uh, texted me after he listened to the beginning of that episode, and he goes, it, "My intro that week was or was that uh, Drew had just banged a chick on an Aladdin blanket." And uh, Edward texts me, and he says, uh, "So he took her on a magic carpet ride, eh?" That's right. That's right. <laughs> I was like, I can't believe we didn't think about that. Edward Shelton, you're a genius. So, uh, Showed her a whole new world, you'd say. He did. Things yeah. she'd never seen before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. Today we're going to be discussing the Blue Lantern Corps. Yeah. And Flash, of course. Oh. Before we get started, I want to give a special announcement that episode 50, which will be two months from now, will be a video cast as well. Wait, what? We're going to be... I re- wasn't informed of this. It will be a video cast, so it will be... Uh, all the podcasts are on YouTube, but they're audio only. This one will be video as well, so it, it'll also still be on your iTunes if you'd rather still listen to it like you always do, but uh, if you want to see our pretty mugs and see us playing around with the pets and stuff while we're recording or probably shoving our faces full of food or whatever the hell we have to be doing that As week. you say this, I'm holding your cat over here. I don't know. Old Dick Grayson, he's being actually being decently well-behaved No, I've been once. back here trying to keep Austin him knows how to stuff. handle dicks. So he does. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, episode 50 will be a video cast as well. Uh, let's get into news first, and we have a crap ton of it this week. Would you say it's a metric crap ton? I would. I would go that far. All I would right. go as far to say it's a metric shit ton. Let's start. Whoa! With, let's start with the worst news, in my opinion. <laughs> in my opinion, we got a new storm spoiler from Days of Future Past. She is a rare, and she's pretty damn meh. Uh, she's, she's about forty points too much. Yes, exactly. She's one hundred and fifty points. Yeah. X Men TA, of course. No willpower. She does have the move and attack symbol with flight, of course. Uh, seven range, two bolts. And her top click is running shot energy explosion, again with two bolts, and perplex, and then a special defense power. She can use ESD, and when she's targeted at range, she can use super senses. So, not too bad. Um, third click, or second click is more of the same. Third click, she gets pulse wave instead. And then the next two clicks, she loses running shot, just has pulse wave with force blast. And then six and seven. She has very mediocre values. She finally picks up willpower, and she picks up RCE. As Austin said, extremely, not extremely. I think a mediocre. she had Indom. But very. Mediocre at Indom is an yeah. understatement. Eight attack. This is a bad figure. Yeah. This, this is a bad figure. This is not a good figure. There's better storms. Um, the one that came on the team base is pretty good. I've tried it a couple M10. times now. M10 is extremely good. Both versions are good, but especially the 59.1. GSX is pretty solid. GSX is pretty solid. The Mutations and Monsters 100.1 is good, too, that I yeah. always say. There have It's traditional that there are a lot of good storms. and uh, This just isn't one of them. It's pretty shitty. That That's fine. Uh, you got to have bad... You know, as they say in Magic, you got to have bad cards to have good cards. Yeah. yeah you got to have bad yeah. clicks to have good clicks. Um, speaking of a pretty good click, Silver Sable got spoiled. Oh, she, gravity she is the epitome of what I expected of a Gravity Feed figure. She's pretty solid. She's uh, 78 points, wild card, heroes for hire, keyword. Um, I've noticed so far that almost, or a vast majority of the Gravity Feed are heroes for hire. So we're going to be getting a lot of heroes for hire in this set. Which is good. Which is good. Cause that's because a, they a toned keyword. down their uh, yeah. ACA. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's 90% of why they did <laughs> She also has Outlaws, Soldier, and Wild Pack. Wild Pack. Um, Outlaws. 78 points wild card. She's a tra- she has a good trait. Once per game, choose CCE or RCE. She can use that chosen power this game. So depending on what you need, what role you need her to fit in your team, she can provide that. She also has 7 range. Um, she starts out with a special movement power, which has energy shield, running shot, and the flight ability. 
and she has Empower on top of that. So she's kind of like a mix and match dial, honestly. Yeah, that's what I meant by, like, she reminds me of most Gravity Feed figures. A lot of Gravity Feed figures are pretty mix, mix and match. The next two clicks are Stealth, and she picks pre picks up Precision Strike. And then the last two clicks, she's only five clicks long, are Plasticity, Blades, and Reflexes. With decent values. So she's pretty solid. She's not super impressive, but she's pretty solid for her points. And, she's uh, no Iron Fist, though. Again, since she is... Uh, in the gravity feed, we assume there will also be another Silver Sable in the main set. Mm -hmm. This next one is a spoiler that actually we spoiled. Uh, us and Phil. And it is the Celtic Guardian, which is the OP kit figure from Yu-Gi-Oh! Unfortunately, there's only one... This is the only thing in the Yu-Gi-Oh! OP kit. Which is... Why no Millennium items or anything? Yeah, I don't know. But this this guy is really cool. Yeah. He's 85 points. He ignores characters on movement. He has an awesome trait. Each time an opposing character moves due to its own action, after actions resolve, you may move Celtic Guardian one square. That is nuts. That triggers off sidestep. Triggers off anything. I know. It's just like, because most stuff, it's like due to a move action. Right. No, with him, say. it's moves due to its own action. Yeah, they running shot, charge, sidestep, hypersonic, just flat out move up, anything. You He's moving move. one square. And he ignores characters. And he has charge, flurry, and a special blades. Oh, sorry. He has charge and special blades, and then later gets flurry and uh, blades. Uh, his special blades is, he can use blades when he does hit characters, modify values, negative one until your next turn. Unless already modified by this. Unless, yeah, unless he's already hit you. So no, no grouping him up. He has a solid dial, a uh, top dial. He has charge, the special blades, and reflexes. And then he gets flurry blades, super senses, and then gets um, exploit at the same time. So you have your option of either for exploit or blades. Points. Yeah, for only 85 points, he's pretty solid. Um, keywords, he does have warrior, so that will help him fit in your Silver Age teams. He also has Yugi and Earth. It's a bummer that they didn't... Um... There's only one in the OP kit. That's really weird. I, I know. I, I thought it said it was going to be three of three. Yeah, I thought it was three. Yeah, thought yeah. It was three well, three, no, three. we were debating because we couldn't find the retailer assets That's, for the OP They kit. didn't even put on there till like two weeks ago. Um, I want an apology. Let's talk. You called me a liar. That it didn't exist? Yes. No, I just said that <laughs> it, we couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, Speed Demon is from Deadpool as well. He is a super rare, and a, there is also a super rare prime for him. First, let's talk about the um, uh, main set one. Austin, you want to talk about him? Oh, man, I love this guy. Um, he's 110 points, Sinister Syndicate team ability. Um, he has no combat symbols that are out of the ordinary and a zero range. Um, but he does have improved, improved movement, ignores characters, and hindering. Um, and he has a special trait. When he moves, after actions resolve, choose an opposing character and roll a d6. If the result is less than the number of distinct squares that Speed Demon moved into or through that are adjacent to that character during the movement, you may place that character within line of fire of its square and up to, and up to the result away in squares and deal that character half the result in damage. So you can go run around someone in a circle and then they'll spin out a few squares away and take damage. Just really sounds <laughs> sounds like a blast. Honestly, I was sad though when when it was pointed out to me that it's only one character because I was thinking you could run by a line of characters and spin them all out. And when they pointed out it is only one character, I was a little bit sad about that. But it's still really cool. As long as you move at least six squares around somebody, you'll be able to do it. Guaranteed. Um, yeah. And even if you can just do three, you have a pretty good chance. 50, 50 at chance. Getting it. Yeah. And it's half the result in damage, so I mean, if you roll a six, that's three damage, and they move. Minimum, you're at least hitting them for one, just, yeah. you know, free. Um, you can reposition them three squares away to deal three damage. I mean, that's awesome. And improved yeah. movement characters, of course, helps a whole lot with triggering that. And then, uh, that starts with a 14 hypersonic on top dial, too, with that. So, I mean, like, you're gonna have some fun with this, and I, I guarantee people are gonna have some fun with this one. Um... Three click or two clicks in, he picks up a special movement power called a uh, twofer. He can use hypersonic speed when he does. During his move, he may be given a free action to make a second close combat attack. So basically, uh, hit two people, spin one out. Yep. With solid attack values too, ten and three. Uh, he only picks up a nine on his very last click. He doesn't go down to a two damage until clicks number five and six. But the best part about all of this. Is that it's fucking speed, David. And that they're clicking the fucking know, sinister But he picks up a special buzz. damage power down dial, too. That's really good. Oh, I forgot about uh, that. Wellspring of power. He can oh, use yeah. perplex. 
You can modify a combat value other than damage by two and targeting a missile for a character that shares a keyword with him. And look at that list of keywords, Hunter. And you know what's sadly missing. That's what I was about to say. They didn't give him superior superior foes keyword or um, send. Well, they he, they did at least say give it sinister syndicate. And they are technically yeah. the sinister six with five people. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, he's heroes for hire, scientists, sinister syndicate. Squadron Sinister and Thunderbolts. You know what? That's a fun uh, generic keyword that people don't tend to play too often, Scientist, anymore. Like, they were really well, big back in Chaos War. And what's good about him being a scientist is most of the scientists are supporty pieces yeah. or ranged pieces. And it's... I don't... I can't, off the top of my head, think of any other than Superman 001 that has hypersonic and has scientist. Flash? He doesn't have I thought he, one of the Flashes was a scientist. Uh, he might be, but he I should. mean, there's like five of them, I mean. I guess you could go and give him scientist. He's more. He's a crime scene investigator. Well, no, that's Barry, but I thought one of them was a scientist. Anyway, now the more depressing spoiler, which I'll get to when we explain him. You really think he's too, that depressing? No, 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 no. He's depressing for a hilarious reason. Oh, there's one very depressing part about old Wizard here, who is the prime super rare. Now, the one thing people are really happy about, though, is since Wizard is the super rare prime, that does mean that Venom is not, which a lot of people were really afraid he would be. Yes. But what's really depressing about Wizard is he's very similar to uh, the guy we just talked Speed about. Demon. But he does not ignore hindering. He oh. ignores no, no, no. everything else in the game. That's not what actually I was going to say. But he doesn't uh, ignore hindering. In the article, they do mention he ignores hindering. I, I heard that was a typo, but we'll see. Okay. Um, now, Wizard Wizard's 120 points, but he has Indom. Um, he ignores Elevated, he ignores Water, um, he ignores Blocking, and he ignores Characters on Movement. So he can phase through the Empire State Building, but he gets tripped up on a little piece of, of Poison Ivy. <laughs> well, during Hypersonic Movement, don't you ignore... No. No. Oh. I didn't know that. No, you don't ignore it. It's just most people with hypersonic have flying. Yeah. Um, he has a special movement power that's topped out with a 14 movement. He can use hypersonic speed. When he does, he can make a second attack during it. Sounds vaguely familiar. He also has a special defense power of combat reflexes and super senses for his first three clicks. And then he picks up a special damage power four clicks in for his last three clicks. He can use stealth if he used hypersonic during your last turn. I like that. That's really cool, actually. Like, um... I imagine we're going to get a Barry Allen or somebody. But he doesn't the... ignore hindering terrain. Shut up. So why does he give a shit about stealth? It could just be a typo. If he goes into it, he can't get back out. But he can hide behind it. That's true, but they can still shoot him. I, I imagine we'll get a Barry with a similar power or something that, like, if he if he hypersonics this turn, he has energy shield or something like that. If they screwed up and didn't give this super rare prime, ignores hindering, I... This better be a typo on the card. No, you ready for the depressing part about him? What? We have two Squadron Supreme characters. They're both primes. I know. Yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, does the Speed, Speed on Demon prime have it? No, Squadron Sinister. Yes, Squadron Sinister. Okay. So everyone's been so depressed because they're like, we finally get Squadron Supreme and both characters are primes. Yeah, there's a... So, uh, guess what? What's kids with We deal? better get a cool I would be so it. disappointed if I opened the prime over with Speed Demon. Oh, no. Yeah, for sure. I want Speed Demon. I don't give a shit about the other dude. Fuck Wizard. <laughs> there you go. Real talk. Um, that's not nice. There's a little article about Guardians of the Galaxy, but honestly, there's nothing new in here we don't we know about. We got to see a few sculpts. Um, I'll link this in the podcast description, but we see a sculpt of Rocket, Thanos, Groot, um, Drax, um, Quasar, Mantis. Oh, yeah. Uh, Iron Man with Gun the Man. with his uh, Guardians of the Galaxy uh, uniform and some images of the Inhumans, Fast Forces. Um, sculpts look pretty good. Um, it's obvious their art style they're going for is the newer version, not the old school uh, Guardians of the Galaxy series. Thanos is, the Thanos sculpt, what I like about it is that it's different than the Thanos we have. It's not just him standing there holding his fist out, it's yeah. him actually actively doing something. It looks pretty cool. But no actual news or, or anything spoilery we haven't seen yet. And then, of course, we got Flash. Yeah, now, buddy. Flash will be a full set, 10 booster brick with the gravity feed, all that good stuff. Fast Forces will be rogues. It does not show which ones exactly it will be. But you There are some images. There are some images. Captain Boomerang is definitely going to be in this set. Um, Grodd and the 
Right. Uh, Gorilla go. City Soldiers are going to be a little theme, uh, a sub theme. Like Gorilla City is is basically one of the sub themes. Uh, Max Mercury is going to be in it. Max Mercury. There's Mirror Master, Captain Cold, Heatwave. Heat Heatwave. Uh, is Girder in here? I don't know if I've seen him yet. Edrigan, the fan vote winner. Authority is one of the sub themes, which I'm Good pretty cool lighter. excited about. A Harley Quinn. And then we have the Harley Quinn from Jeteray, or Jeteray, or however you pronounce his him? name. Yeah, it's his. Who, uh, this figure, and we can talk about this for a second. Oh my gosh. This sadly. Con- there should not be a controversy over this. Sadly, people are getting their panties in a bunch because this Harley, this sculpt has Harley, uh, Jeteray sitting in a chair. And he's got the Joker face because he's been gassed. Yeah, he's got a big smile on his face like the Joker face. And then Harley is standing up, has her arm around his uh, shoulders, and then has one knee up on the chair kind of on his lap. But here's the thing. And some of you may look at the sculpt and realize as soon as you look at it, I don't care, it may look familiar to you because this is on Arkham Asylum. I think it was on the first one, Arkham Asylum. On the back cover uh, is this exact oh, yeah. picture. Except it's the warden. Sharp, warden Sharp is sitting in the yeah. chair, and she has his hands tied to the chair, which I assume is what they are going for here. Yeah, it's I mean, the exact same pose. Exact same pose. It's him sitting in the chair, his hands down on the armrest, and then her with the knee up on him. She's not. She doesn't have her butt on his crotch area. She's not like on top of him, giving him a lap dance. But it's, he's also kind of dead at the moment, so I don't think it really matters, even if she was. That's just kind of the, <laughs> that's just kind of the pose. Yeah. But there's a huge uproar about this, and it's honestly one of the dumber things and nitpicky things I've seen. Wait, here they're recently. they're mad about the sculpt. They yeah, think, people think they call her lap dance Harley is a people slight. think it's too far. Like, it's too over-sexualized for I just Harley think. Quinn, the character in skin tight clothes yeah. all the time. As I said online. This isn't Martha fucking Kent. Yeah, this is hardly. Although Quinn. I would pay good money for a lap dance, Martha. Yeah, Kent. can we get Martha Kent to? That's what I'm making. So grow up. When guys. I win, when I win worlds <laughs> next year, it's Martha Kent giving ready. Drew a, giving Drew a lap dance. That's my dream. And I'll have like <laughs> hundreds of, in my hand, and it'll be like. <laughs> I think what people are doing is they're using. They don't like the sculpts. They're using an excuse to kind of slide it. Yeah. Anyway. The scope's not bad. That's I don't think it's see, a bad. Okay, let's go back. Star Girl was worse. Listen, let's go back to Star Girl. No one likes Star Girl because it had the guy in it. Right? It's uh, this. The sculpt, it just doesn't seem like it's Star. Just, it's just ugly. The whole sculpt. It doesn't is just seem ugly. like Star, something Star Girl would do. You know, not to mention she's like but skating on this tiny. Little... Harley Quinn would probably kill a guy, and then this looks very fitting. Yes, that's uh, a very for a picture. Honestly, I think it's a pretty good sculpt. Actually, I, I like it a lot. Honestly. Uh, but anyways, we digress. Sub themes will include rogues, flashes, allies, and the authority, among others. Uh, I haven't really seen any that I would say flashes, allies, except for there is the three. We assume each version of the Flash will appear here: I Jay, don't know 50. Jay, Barry, and there's not fifty. There's like three. I still get them mixed up. Jay, Barry, and Wally, and then the two Kid Flashes. Or what then about Frank? Bart, Frank, who? I don't know. I'm just fucking. You don't. You don't know. Your, <laughs> you don't know your DC. You can't even talk. It doesn't matter. Your Trigans in the set. Screw you. Seventeen common, sixteen uncommon, sixteen rares, twelve super rares, and only three chases. And there are primes as well. What in the flying fucker with, is with these numbers? I'm not sure what the three chases will be. I'm Go not, up real quick. I don't know what that's 17, about. 16, 16, 12. This is terrible. Well, that's what they've done on the last two sets because we keep complaining Deadpool's about like that too. Yeah, yeah, we keep complaining Stop about. Stop it. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's get to the big one. Oh, I'm so happy. For and this. our main thing today, it's Blue Lantern Corps. Let's. I am hopeful that this is awesome. First, let's talk about the ring. It's supposed to be bad. Don't look at me like that, Drew. It hurts. That was pretty awful. Even Austin standards, that's pretty awful. Yeah. That's pretty bad. Then this one's only four points. The ring that is, uh, as the other ones, it's five to six pickup. If the character already has Blue Lantern Corps, modify all values except damage plus one. Otherwise, this character has Blue Lantern Core keyword and can use Perplex, but only to increase combat value. That's so, adorable. very similar to Sinestro, except Sinestro was only to decrease, this is only to increase. Now, their special battery power, if you match all the colors up to blue, is nuts. <laughs> is very good. If the power battery, attached ring, and construct are all the same color, during each of your opponent's turns, 
one friendly core member may re-roll a roll made for itself. So super senses, shape change, impervious, absorbing man, absorbing man, um, special powers like what Kane has from Amazing Spider-Man, absorbing man. Wait, I thought Kane's was offensive. No. Oh no no no! Sorry, I'm thinking of Scarlet Spider. Sorry. Um, any kind of special power like the Grundy I played today, who rolls and ignores half the damage, or absorbing or man. Absorbing man. <laughs> so. Blue Lantern Corps Absorbing Man, 2014. So, yeah, get Check ready, if, if there is uh, a watch list coming soon. If <laughs> there's a construct that gives him, that can give him willpower from that, Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The main reason is, the main thing is he still won't be able to yeah. get willpower from that, and that's what's going to what's gonna kill him. But anyways, yeah, the, the possibilities are really cool. Like, you can take figures that you like. It's cool to build around this, and it's yeah. cool. They're all going to give us cool things to build around. So pretty happy with those. At least it's not completely broken like the red light. And well, then we got the... Red Lantern hasn't been shown yet, has it? No. Or not the Red Lantern, the... The uh, yellow. Yellow, sorry. And then we have the dials for the Blue Lanterns. Let's have Drew start us off with St. Walker himself. You got, all, you got me all excited, This Drew. is my, my boy, St. Walker. He's an L.E. <laughs> he is an L.E. Uh, he starts off with a very nice running shot. Nine, is that nine? That's nine range. Nine range, double bolt. Double bolt. Precision Strike, 10 attack, 17 energy shield with a special attack or damage ability. Hope Rising, St. Walker can use Perplex, but only to increase combat values. When a friendly character with the Blue Lantern Core keyword uses Perplex, modify its range value by plus 3. Huh, that's kind of weird because, you know, everyone with that freaking keyword at base that isn't granted it by the ring. So, let's get this straight. Most people in this set, by the way, have very long ranges. And have perplex. And have perplex. Uh, hey, uh. So, uh. It says when a friendly character, not when another friendly character. He would get it as well. So He's he got a 12 range. Perplex. So when he uses this perplex, he goes to a 12 range. That's nuts. 12 range double bolt precision strike with two bolts is, is nice. That is nice. You're guaranteeing a 12 range running shot. Well, you, okay, so a 9 movement plus a 12 range running shot, if you wanted to pump up your movement just to get even more swing out of it, you now have a 6 plus a 12, so you have an 18 square swing on this guy. If blue, you need it to blue land and constructed teams are going to be nuts the only, with this guy. The only thing I don't like about the figure is I don't like the sculpt. I, it's okay. It's okay, but I think they could have done it cooler. If you look close, it, ha- it looks like it has little ridges in it, like they're radiating out. Oh, yeah, that would out. look better. Can you see it? Yeah, I see it's kind of hard to see on the picture, but I bet on the sculpt it has little lines, and so it kind of looks like a puddle of water, like it's radiating out. It probably it. looks way better. And once again, once again, we're getting the new Guardians keyword, which is awesome. I'm mm-hmm. really happy. It's about on that. quite a few figures, which is cool because the new Guardians, of course, are like one from each of the cores. So I mean, like you're gonna have, be able to build a pretty fun team out of that. Next up is Ganthet. You want to talk about him, Austin? He's uh, oh, I'm very rare. happy with Ganthet. So Ganthet's 175 points quintessence. Um, he's a flyer with nine range, one bolt. Um, he starts with phasing teleport. A, is that an 18 or a 19 in per 18? 18. 18. Um, a special attack and damage power. His special attack power is with pain, hope. He can use incapacitate. When he does, after actions resolve, hit characters are each dealt his printed damage value. And until your next turn, each hit character increases its defense by the number of action tokens it is assigned. So it incap... It- it's a trade-off, but it's worth it. Yeah. Jesus, it's worth it. If I, This guy needs Doc Ock arms. If I've ever seen a figure that needs Doc Ock arms. <laughs> Seriously. So, uh, yeah. uh, I'm going to hit four p- different people, give them all tokens, and then deal them all <laughs> four damage. <laughs> so um, nuts. The best part is, though, if you pop a bunch of people that already have tokens, they'd be dealt damage equal to his printed damage value. They'd take the one penetrating... And they would they weren't assigned any more action tokens, so they wouldn't get the bonus. Well, it says number of action tokens it is assigned. I think it it doesn't matter if you just oh, assign them. It just means that they this have should them. be the last thing you do in a turn, though. Like, you know. um, and then the special damage power is uh, another hope power, which is uh, hope spreading. He can use perplex, but only to increase combat values. When he does, he may increase the same combat value on all friendly characters within range and line of fire. There's no damage restriction for this one. We'll oh, no. skates, 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 skates. Hey, Hunter, what's his range there? All buddy? friendly. It doesn't even have to be all blue lantern. It's just all friendly. 
Oh no, what's that uh, range right there? Right? Nine range, buddy. That is nine range. And who no, 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 buffs no. the range of blue landing? St. Walker. Saint Walker. <laughs> oh, God bless you. Praise him. Praise him, St. Walker. Hope is alive, brothers. <laughs> yeah, Gantt is pretty good. He's, oh, dude, and he's got a great dial. He's got some uh, mid-dial uh, t- uh, invincible shot. into toughness. Um, he's got a wit down dial at a 12 range with St. Walker. Um, his, his next click, like, you can switch him from a support into... You you switch the phasing, you you push him on purpose, lose the phasing, get the running shot, and have running shot with that special end cap prob and prob control. Uh, I, is sick. I love him. I mean, like, this is exactly what I want when I picture, like, Ganthet. Oh, I'm I'm playing Doc Ock Arms with this son of a bitch. You better believe it. Uh, Ganthet. Oh, shut up. Ganthet and freaking <laughs> split lip BFFs. Here comes uh I want to talk about old Kyle Rayner because I like him. He's cute, man. Oh, Let's he's do. a very This is man. also one of the better uh, Blue Lanterns that we are, have. Are we getting a Kyle Rayner of each color? It seems like it. Because I need to check the... Let me check the list real quick. While it's, we're well, that's thematic. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have New Guardians, which sucks because that's what you want your Kyles for. But uh, Kyle, Land, uh, Kyle Rayner, Blue Lantern, only has Blue Lantern core keyword. Uh, he starts off with Running Shot. Um, it's worth noting, at only 85 points, he has Endom, and not a whole lot of figures in oh, this yeah. set have Endom. Running shot, 8 range, 2 bolts. And energy explosion, and an 18 defend on an 85 point what? piece. On an 85 point piece that already dishes out, so, has solid values and solid range, and Endom, and all that stuff, they gave him an 18 defend. He Second click and third click, he loses running shot, but keeps energy explosion, and he gets sidestep instead. And then two clicks is number four and five. He gets a special movement power. It's also a hope. He can use perplex, but only to increase combat values. If the targeted character has the Green Lantern core keyword, modify the value by plus two instead of plus one. Now that's what I want to see. I want to see more of the Green Lantern, Blue Lantern crossover stuff. Hey, huh? What's that? What's this guy's range? This guy's range was eight. All these bolts? two. Oh, man. He gets a special damage power on his last three clicks, which is very good as well. He can use support. When an adjacent friendly character misses with an attack, Kyle can use support as a free action to t- on this turn, but only to target that character. But still. I mean, how often does that free action not support? happen? <laughs> so this guy is a basically a, a hybrid support piece. He can carry. He's got an 18 freaking defend. Perplex. And then a special support. I really think we'll be seeing he some can of hold his in own, the future. He can hold his own in combat. I think he'll be good for the sealed. He's only a uncommon, too. Yeah. And he's the A version, so there'll be a prime of him. So, uh, speaking of hybrids, Hunter. Drew, you want to talk about old Hal Jordan here? Oh, you know Hal, I'm upset with this figure. You know what? Yeah, I'm very upset. I assume you're upset for the same reason I am. Most likely. Why? No Green Lantern key- core keyword. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. He's half and half. Green and blue, but he only has the blue. Is he a prime? Wait a minute. He is, he's, a he's the common prime. Okay. What? Yeah. Are you sure? Because he doesn't have. Does he have a green ring? I don't know why he. Uh, no, he doesn't group, have. A so you know what they're doing. I if think, you remember back to Secret Invasion, there were two versions of each character. There was a scroll ver or some characters. There was a scroll version, yeah. and there was a non-scroll version. We'll see. I bet you these. I bet you there's like regular Al Jordan. It might be, but I think they may have also like also they may have screwed. Anyway, screwed anyway, up anyway. This I'm opening the evidence thread right now, so we'll see. All right. Go okay, ahead, he's got a. He starts off with a pretty snazzy. He's got seven range, by the way. I'd like to point that out right now. Everybody got good range in this set, man. Uh, okay, a, so the big thing you're playing this son of a. Okay, base. he has a prime. They goofed. On the spoiler. Oh, the UFT is a prime? Are you sure? Yes, that's what it says on the evidence. I was pretty sure that when we first talked about the evidence that he was on the prime slot anyway. Okay. Because Orange Lantern Hal is the base common. Okay. Alright, anyway. Anyway. Starts with a 10, he's got 10 speed running shot, which is pretty good. With top dial injury explosion, 10 attack, 17 toughness, which is eh, but he's got a special uh, damage ability. Mm Mm-hmm. Hal Jordan, all friend, adjacent friendly characters with the Blue Lantern core keyword can use willpower. Oh, St. Walker needs that willpower. Oh, does he? Have, do. He can use it. Yeah, all of them except for Ganthet pretty much need it and Kyle. He rolls on later to a uh, attack ability. He can use Perplex, but only to increase combat values. Oh, darn. So just the standard hope. Just just your standard hope. He does lose running shot, which I don't like. I really don't like for that. 104. That is a fast loss of running yeah, shot. Yeah, for 104 points. Yeah. 
But uh, ten range ain't bad though. In a late dial three last three clicks, he gets prob. But I don't like him for his points. I don't either. At all. I, I, if he had Green Lantern keyword, I might be a little more forgiving, but I still don't like I him. I think he feels a niche for blue lanes. Um, I would do want to bring up while I'm on this evidence thread that I noticed that I forgot. There are three common primes in the first set. Oh, really? Yeah. Orange Lantern, Hal, and then Hal, Jordan, Blue Lantern are the common and prime first set. That's number 11. Number 12 is Red Lantern, Hal, and Black Lantern, Hal. Number 13 is Sinestro, Core, Ramat, Rue, and Prime, Tomar, Ray. Those are the three common... Yeah, because there's multiple common, uncommon rare I have primes. no idea how the distribution is going to be for this set. Well, Not they said we're supposed to be getting some exciting stuff in every single booster, so we'll yeah, see. Yeah, they said that. <laughs> they said that about every... All right. Next up is uh, another brother. Brother Ham. Brother Ham in the house. Blue Lantern keyword. Uncommon in the set. He's only got Perplex. Give me a hint. Uh, yeah, the normal hope Perplex only to bump combat values, a special attack power of enhancement... And adjacent friendly characters modify their range plus one. And That's then he has a barrier with eight range. Eight. How much how, many, how much are range on him? Eight. Eight. Ocho. Eight range barrier is good. Especially when he packs prop control on top of that. For 85 points. So this guy is just a solid support piece. He's 85 points. So for 85 points in sealed, you're gaining barrier, prob, enhancement, and plus one range on adjacent friendly characters. Oh, yeah, and perplex. What's that? What's that really nice last click he has there? Uh, so he keeps that for his first click. Next click, he can attack back because he loses prop control and barrier, but he trades it for range combat expert and slightly better attack. An energy shield. And uh, and an energy shield. And then on clicks four to five, he gets running shot, and pretty much the same stuff. But like Austin said, last three clicks he gets special damage power. He can use support. When an adjacent friendly character misses with an, with an attack roll, he can use support as free action ability to target that but character. What's that last click have that's so sexy with that? 14 defend. Force Blast and a 14 defend with the support and a 10 attack. He only needs a goddamn 4 to support you. How great is Possibly that? for free. This guy's sick. I like him He's for sealed. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. He's probably going to be your go-to support guy for sealed. If you're playing and what's I mean, cool with him is none of that required blue, blue lantern keyword. None yep. of that stuff. So you can throw him on any SEAL team and just really support your team. Take him with a, with a Red Lantern bruiser and with a, somebody else who's like a good sniper and just let him buff the crap out of him. What's up? Indigo, Indigo Charm. Charm. Yeah. Yeah, We were talking about that last week. Uh, Austin, you want to talk about Sister Cersei? Yes, because I really like this piece. Um, she's 66 points, um, flight, no end on, six range, one bolt, shortest range we've seen so far. Um, she opens with TK, Prob, Willpower, and a special movement power, which is perplex only to increase combat values. Um, she pushes onto a barrier, onto barrier, loses TK, and still has a perplex, and still has Prob. Her third and fourth clicks, she picks up a special attack power, which is where she may choose in power or enhancement, and she has that power this turn. And then on her final click, once again, we have that magical 14 defend, 10 attack. It's the exact same and click, special support actually. power. It's the exact same click Fourth as Brother Ham. Yep. So you remember everything I just said about Brother Ham? Subtract 20 points and 2 range. Yeah. <laughs> and give him TK instead of... But you, are instant. you telling me I might want, you know, 3 extra range with my... With my... I don't know if you have some she, sort of Saint Walker with her. So she doesn't have barrier top click, but she has TK. But she has barrier second click. And then she gets barrier second click if you want to push her. Um, I like it. I, I like it a lot. 66 points. We've talked about value. That is value. Her and brother him both are very good for seal. Now we got a... And again, she's only an uncommon. Yeah. Now we got a... Last, oh man, I'm so happy. Rest in peace, brother fucking Worth. Shut up, Worth. Rest I in have peace, hope brother. he is not dead. He ain't dead. Let's see, all these Worf lives on in my heart. Okay, he's dead. But... Jokes. Uh, 100 points right on the dot. Five range, who now has the shortest range that we've seen. But that makes sense for him. He beats stuff up. He's an elephant, he man. He has charge. The only one of these blue lanterns that we've seen that has charge. And he has special attack power. Hope in the face of evil. Can use perplex only to increase values. When he does, a targeted character modifies its defense plus one against close combat attacks. That's fancy. He has prob control. Second click, he loses charge instead of sidestep. Third click, he picks up charge. Fourth click, he picks up sidestep. Also has Invul, which is something we haven't seen on a lot of these Warlight figures so far. That's true, and he gets a special damage power, which is something we haven't seen yet uh, for the Blue Lanterns. He can use Close Combat, Expert, and Empower. 
Adjacent friendly characters modify tag values plus one. That's pretty monstrous, though, if you have really good melee. Yeah. Dude, uh, run him with some red lanterns and sealed. Because yeah. you know those red lanterns are going to be up in people's faces. Well, and if you're running a blue lantern cord key- keyword, he gives you the close combat attacker that you're going to inevitably need. And the good tie-up with a 17 freaking invul. Something cool I noticed when I was looking at these dials the other day. Uh, Brother Worth, who's one of the better ones. Same. And Kyle Rayner, who's one of the better ones. And St. Walker, who's one of the better ones, add up to a perfect 300 points. Yay! So that would be a fun That's team That's adorable. So, very happy with these guys. Very happy with all the World of Life spoilers so oh, far. Oh, they're great. Then we got, got freaking Guardians of the Galaxy coming out, and then we got a Flash set now. What the, What are you doing to me? I might have any money. No money. My money's gone. No money. Screw all this other stuff I wanted to do. Damn it, clicks. Keep pulling me back in. Let's do a quick what we played. We haven't done what we played in a while, boys. Plus, we have a fun story to tell. Did you? That Austin probably... I don't want to talk about this! Doesn't want to talk about it. I'm leaving the room. You can talk about it. So, oh, yeah. So Shut when, up, Drew. Wednesday at Game Preserve... That's pretty funny, Shut actually. up, Drew. We had our month four AVX. Shut up, Drew. I didn't play. But, 500 know. points. Uh, play two starters. And play your theme team of your team. It was Modern Age, right? Modern yep, it was Modern Age. Yeah, it had to be Modern Age. Only resources, Phoenix Force, yada, 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 the same old story. Uh, but going into it, Austin was one point ahead of me on overall player points. And we inevitably faced off in the last round. I played a team of Ant-Man, Hockey, hockey Puck Ant-Man. He was the only one assigned the Phoenix Force. He was assigned the Invul Shard, and then I had three on the base, uh, especially TK and Mystics from Ranged. He was alternating between those on offense and defense, and he's on the click where he starts on Defend. So I have 20 Defend on my team. Then I have Sharon Carter to give my team Stealth, and then I have uh, Scarlet Witch from the starter and Thor from the starter, because Thor was really the only Avenger I hadn't played yet. We played so many Avengers and X-Men. I was just so sick of everything. I had to play some new figures. So I tried Thor and I tried Ant-Man. Um, and then I also had 001 Iron Man at 150. So as you expect, the moral of the story is Iron Man carries up one person in the tiny. Thor carries up Scarlet Witch. We stick together. We all have stealth. We all have a 20 defense. Come at us. Come and get some. Then when they get in range, I have Pulse away from Thor to handle any problems. Then Iron Man has Outwit. Sharon has Perplex. Scarlet Witch has Perplex. And Scarlet Witch can take away problem team abilities, especially Mystics, if they leave it on the base, which is what everyone did except for Austin. Yep. So I was taking Mystics away from people with Scarlet Witch. And um, pretty really good team. I went three... Well, I went 2-0. and oh, Had some close... The second match was pretty close. Um, third round, go up against Austin. Now, Austin, why don't you tell people what scummy piece you ran once scummy again? Scummy piece. This is AVX Month 4. There is no definition of cheese. If you call someone else's cheese on AVX Month 4, you're playing Hero Clicks for all the wrong reasons. But Thomas what a ca- but Shut what, up, Drew. But what about a casual 1,000-point <laughs> event? Yeah. Shut up. We'll get to that. <laughs> So, my team was a slightly modified version of my month three team, which was Dark Phoenix at 100, um, Professor X at 150, um, what starter figures? Magic. Cheese. Magic cheese. Professor X, that is not magic. Magic sucks. (laughs) Magic was terrible. Um, Jubilee at 33 points. Yeah, you know, when they first spoiled the stars, I was like, oh, magic looks okay, and then as we play, like, magic fucking sucks. (laughs) She's terrible. She is. Well, and then, uh, what was my other figure? You had uh, Emma Frost. Emma Frost. I don't Those were my five. Um, four of them had shards because Jubilee could not have one um, because she's only 33 points. Um, I did not put Magic Shard on my, ba- on my base. Or, I didn't put Emma's Shard on my base. Sorry, that's the one I didn't have on there. Um, all, my ba- all my shards were assigned because I love that first dial so much. And everyone skips that damn dial to leave one back. And that first dial is a monster. It's the best. We talked about it a couple weeks ago. Yeah. If you get over the curve in those first few turns, you pop off two weak characters, which a double starter event, people are going to be running some crappy figures like Magic. 
Donald Blake if he can get to him. Yeah. Easy, easy I mean, kill. like, you just pop two figures really easily, and there's a ton of shenanigans. Like, if people are running, like, tiny, inexpensive things to fill up points and stuff, like, we weren't allowed to play Horde Tokens, but in other events, like, Horde Tokens and stuff like that would trigger it left and right. It's ridiculous. Um, Especially with Poison from the Shards. Yes. Well, my first match, I ran up against uh, um, an M10 Iron Man team. What I did was I per- first off the maps. I want to talk about that map. I love that map to death. It's in my. It's staying with my realm of death is one that I'm going to play the crap out of. Um, the way it works is all ele- everything starts at two elevated, and there's craters of one elevated all throughout the map, and there's some out. There's some blocking here and there. Um, if you uh, the actual text for the map states that all characters ignore elevated on movement, so you basically can hop and hide in these pit holes easily and it allows you to position stuff which with professor xavier was what i was trying to do was get him in a good position where they would have to get really close to try to hit him but he's still getting his effect off because they'd have to get up on the rim just to shoot down at him and put themselves the rims of those craters are wide open like most of them are not in an area where there's blocking nearby so first game i used professor xavier to full effect i had him move in on me i kind of rushed him down in the crater where he moved into a bottom crater down there, had his pieces kind of pushing with my Dark Phoenix back and forth, and I threw everything in the crater and just stacked. And he was kind of confused as to why I was doing that, and then my turn flipped and I just started outwitting stuff, and that poison started ticking on everything because he wasn't running a resource, so he didn't have a Colossus shard or anything protecting him. Well, so in this little cluster down here, I had that starter Thor tied up, so he couldn't do his pulse wave or energy explosion shenanigans. I kept outwitting his pulse wave. Um, then, uh, I basically picked off the rest of his team and left only M10 Iron Man. And what I did was I based M10 Iron Man with magic, because, uh, magic has mystics, so it's really annoying to hit her, and he really didn't want to. And then I positioned everyone else where they could take pot shots at him, but, um, I outwitted, or, and I put Emma Frost base, because Emma Frost had magic shard. So I would outwit his defense every turn. He would take two poison and have to roll to see if he takes the damage from it. And then uh, we would just it was just turn after turn of... I, he must have rolled 20 times for that Iron Man. And I was very... like Honestly, that was the figure I was really worried about going into this tournament. That it was going to destroy me. But he's really handleable if you know what you're doing. And you put everything where it needs to be. And you can keep him tied up and busy. Mm-hmm. As long as you're keeping his main powers outwitted, especially like his pulse waver is perplex, he's locked down. Also, um, this being dock. this being an event where he can't have gauntlet or anger's hammer and heal up, he's yeah. not as good either. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that was the other thing was uh, outwitting his indom with Professor X nearby meant that he would take an action. Then there's two turns. That's four poison ticks he'd have to roll through. Um, second match was against a. That was a really second match was a really weird team. I I didn't. It had Warlock, um, it had the Professor X Magneto duo, and some other stuff. And it actually gave me a lot of problems because Warlock was an absolute pain in the ass. I I can't even explain what went wrong with that game. Like Warlock was like a nineteen twenty defense most of the time with his Perplex for plus two, and he was basing everything. He was basing everything and just. It was so hard to hit him, and it really screwed me up in a lot of places. Um, Dark Phoenix got, like, blasted and knocked out of the game real quick. Um, I ended up losing that game. I scored a good amount of points off of it, though. Um, And that led me into the last round, where I was top of the one-at-ones, and Hunter was bottom of the two O's. Yeah, because my second game was against Silver Centurion, so my opponent just just sat back at the beginning of the game and just sat and kept ticking his thing and just passing turn so my second game was very slow and we didn't get very far i only killed i killed like two figures he killed one so i i didn't have that many points so me and hunter's game um hunter was running ant-man of course which creates a problem right off the bat you have to have a way to deal with that Uh, my way was pulse wave right out the gate i wanted to get my phoenix in pulse wave hit everything at least get everything down dial a little bit um if i could if i could at least get ant-man down one that one makes it, drops it from a 9 to an 8 that I'd need to hit on a lot of people. And that's pretty substantial right there because it's another 12, 13% chance to hit on everything. Um, so right out the gate, Hunter positioned everything. I realized I had a good opportunity to run in Pulse Wave. 
Um, Hunter missed his barrage of attacks back at me. I got a second pulse wave off. The key thing is, though, on the pulse waves, he didn't hit Ant-Man. Yeah, I so, missed Ant-Man. But he I hit, hit everyone else, else and knocked two characters off Precision Strike. That, which, that was very key. Oh, man, that really... Um, my Professor Xavier was very the, thankful. The whole reason I played Iron Man was for Professor Xavier. Because he has Precision Strike and Outwit. Two yeah. ways to get around the Mastermind. So if I played Professor X, I studied his dial like I do with any problem piece. I was like, I just need to hit him for three clicks, and he loses Mastermind. Iron Man has four damage, so all I gotta do is hit him one time, per- use all my perps on attack, make sure Scarlet Witch has on fire, and I'll blast the son of a bitch off of Mastermind, and the game will go so that much That didn't easier. happen, Hunter. It didn't happen, because Austin Don't. rolled like a champ. Oh, uh, Hunter, how many 10s and 11s was that? Six in a row? Yeah, so like I said... He didn't hit Ant-Man, so I still had 20 defense as long as everybody was next to Ant-Man, but Professor Xavier was really slowing me down. So I did Scarlet Witch's thing, took away Power Cosmic from Dark Phoenix, because I knew she would be a problem, Uh, and I smoked her, and then I smoked Jubilee Prime. The problem is, Austin managed to get the rest of his team up in my face. Outwitting and poisoning everywhere. Outwitting and poisoning. Uh, he could not poison Ant Man though, because I had in bull shard on him, because I knew everybody would be trying to poison him. Yeah. And then Austin would like every time need a ten or higher to hit me. And he hit yeah. Hunter used four of his five theme team probs and Scarlet Witch. I remember prob this on moment in one turn, and he still kept hitting it. It was beautiful. Oh, and I was, was all, I was beautiful. wanting to hit for like three. It wasn't like I was trying to hit for a ton. But it was just one of those Hunter wanted to see me fail things. I was like, fuck it, I'll theme prob. He can't hit it again for the, <laughs> the fourth time. That was No, no, no. Your exact words on after the first one was, I'll theme team it because there's no way you'll hit a 10 again. 11. And then you're like, prob. And then you were hitting your head on the table by the fourth time. Um, what ended up happening is we went to time. Uh, we had a pretty slow game. Um, I wasted a lot of time on my turns. I was pretty bad. Considering Xavier, it really wasn't that slow, though, because Xavier oh, slows things. So I left Xavier alone. That's that's to note, because I, I, I was looking at the field, and I was like, it'll be too much trouble to go after Xavier, especially if he can just TK him away, for me to even worry about it. I also kept hiding him in craters. Which so I'm going to kill everybody else, not give a crap about Xavier, and I'll win on points, and that's what happened. Yeah, I announced. I'm so sad. Like it was just. I'm so six bad, points, yeah. and Hunter beat me by one point overall. Yes, one standing point overall. Whoever won that match was going to get it. But here's the fun part: had Hunter gone three zero against somebody else, and I had won my last match, we would have tied on points. But I would have had the tiebreaker. No, you wouldn't have. I've won one match or one one overall. I the tiebreaker is who does better that day. Phil said it was whoever had the most points overall, or whoever had won one total event. Which I had won the first month. I won the second one. Did you? Yeah. Okay, we would have tied then, and then would have probably. That's what I'm saying. Even. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> All I know is that was a really, it was a really honestly, and I, I said it on Facebook too. It was one of those nights that even though I went one two, my games were so good, I felt like it was a three zero night. Yeah. Like it was just, it was a good night overall. It I felt like a three zero night, but you lost the biggest prize of them. Shut up, Drew. Shut so up. So I now have two Phoenix Force Colossus Shut or up, Cyclopses. Hunter. Shut up. I'm just going to keep them in my bedroom, jerk off to them all the time. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what I'm going to do with the other one. No, I'm going to save the other one for a uh, ROC event that we will hopefully do in the future at the dugout. Or as we kids like to call it, The Rock. And you guys are all invited. Whenever we finally do that, we'll announce it and hopefully oh, yeah. some of you guys come can, can come out and, and join us. But um, get your stuff, get your tits signed by the Dial H crew. Today we did a 1,000 point Silver Age name theme teams event, kind of fun event. I did Legion of Doom. I wanted to run a shit ton of toys, so I ran nine toys, I think, with Toy Man, both Grundies. Because who are you going to target when you got two Grundies that don't die? Yeah, I could have been a dick bag and put Bizarro on there too, but I didn't. Um, I wanted to try all the guys I haven't tried yet with Legion of Doom. So I've already played Bizarro. I didn't want to play him. Yeah. So I played both Grundies, Toy Man, nine toys, mostly teddy bears. And I'll explain why in a minute because they're a blast to play. And Until then they all died. Edward Nigma, who's pretty cool. I just picked him up uh, in the mail Thursday. Um, he's pretty good, by the way. Uh, Lex Luthor, who's very good with toys because his trait gives adjacent friendly characters of less points to Superman enemy team ability. So now all of a sudden I have like six outwits from toys, or just a shit ton of outwits. 
And then there was one more figure that I'm forgetting. Oh, Black Mana from Fast Forces. And Book of the Skull. And Fast Forces Giganta. Or, yeah, Fast Forces Giganta. So I tried the three better Fast Forces guys. I don't like the Lex. I don't like the Cheetah. And the Bizarro is pretty meh. So I tried the three Fast Forces that were good. Verdict, uh, Giganta is very good. Yeah, she's nuts. But, and this was always my my thing against her. People were saying she was very good. you got to hide her because yeah. she will get shot down. So what I would do is Toy Man has stealth. I would give him Graythos. Make him sit die. him sit inside yeah. of Gi- in front of Giganta, and then nobody could shoot Giganta. Yeah, and then she could get up on people and hit her. Her thing doing that was so good because her thing of sidestep. Oh, I just moved less than three squares. Let's get a free attack with me having a hammer. Oh, that spins the book. Now let's uh, drop a hammer and quake for free. Oh, now let's charge Flurry. It's like she just was just putting her foot in everybody's ass. She did so good. Both Grundies were good. Even the Fast Forces one was pretty good. I think he's really good with resources. He's cool. He he, he did die in Philbo's event. Philbo killed him at the beginning. And I heard then, Philbo yell about that. And then he's like, wait, that's the one that comes back. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so you set him to the side, and every turn you heal him one. And I waited till the end of the game, because you can place him in any square of hindering. Yeah. So I waited till somebody was next to hindering, brought him back, put him on the map, close combat expert, killed him. Um, Toy Man's really fun. Teddy bears are stupid awesome. So you give them a move action, and then you pulse away for free. So I had five little teddy bear bombs. When people would get low on attack or there's a problem piece giving me problems, I would move them in, pulse wave bomb, and try to hit as many people as I could. Well, yeah, they get a free movement action when toy man, if they're within three of Toy Man, don't they? Yeah. What's their range? You can't trigger it with the, with the teddy bear thing. So okay. what you can do is all toys that are within three of him can be giving a move action for free, but they have to stay within three of him. Yeah. So what you have to do is move them up, then move Toy Man up. The next turn, move them up, then move Toy Man up. So they have to stay around him. But he has Mastermind, so he can Mastermind to them. He has Stealth, he has Outwit, he's a wild card. He was pretty good. Edward Nigma, though, was so sick. Yeah, he's not. All he needs is running shot. Yes. Because he has an amazing mind control and he has problem barrier. I knew all he needed was running shot, so I ran the book. I actually ran the book specifically for him to give him running shot to see how good he'd be, and he was a freaking amazing. Um, good team overall, had good matches. I One thing to note is each toy gets the keyword when you build, so that's plus one to theme. So I had a plus 18 to theme today. So I knew nobody was beating me on Mac. So I got to play the Legion of Doom map that's all water and hindering. That means Grundy heals every turn. That means the other Grundy can pop up pretty much anywhere on the map. And that means Black Manta can start eight squares away in water and can drop a hammer for free first turn, which is something you can't do without split lift. Yep. And he could do it. Um, or without TK. TK is the other way you do it. So it was pretty pretty good team. I went 2-0. I had close matches. Phoenix Buster Iron Man gave me trouble first match because he running shot in Pulse waved my entire team and killed all my toys in one foul swoop. But uh, then old uh, Solomon Grundy hit him with an ultra heavy after outwitting his defense from his trait and one shot him. So it's fair trait. I'll let you take eight of my little toys if I get to take your 175 point best figure. Um, pretty fun matches. Philbo played Defender's team with some of the typical uh, Philbo pieces the Beast, the Colossus, the Iceman. Yeah. They're always fun yeah. to play against. They're good pieces too. Uh, what did you guys play? Oh, well, I know what Austin played. My team was codenamed Nacho Cheese because it was something I didn't know. All right, listen, listen, cheese. listen. listen. <laughs> Remember earlier when I when he was like, "This is ABX." Here this we is, go, Hunter. <laughs> this is ABX. Old man on the porch. Four. <laughs> I'm fucking hit you. Let me talk. <laughs> Jesus. I was just whispering to Hunter. No, you were talking to Hunter. It's ABX month four. <laughs> I'm not gonna play it. I I can play cheese. What'd you what uh, what uh, how would you describe this event, Hunter? What would you say? Overall fun event. Overall fun. Thousand event. point fun. name theme. Teams. What kind of dick would play Professor X two we, two events in a row with a colossal? Oh no! Seeing half the teams there, I don't feel near as bad about it. Not just the colossal. A colossal pain in the ass. Yeah, that a guy. Cyclops at seven hundred is seven hundred seven fifty. Seven fifty is 
No, one of the best colossals that yeah, that is made. So uh, my team was seven fifty colossus <laughs> or uh, cyclops phoenix with Professor X as Drew has pointed out, Marvel Girl for support, and the power plant because God help you all if seven fifty Dark Phoenix Cyclops wasn't bad enough if you gave him all the capabilities of the power plant on top of it because this sucker has colossal stam. He's just building up that bling every turn and he don't care. Oh man, I my first round I cheated, so I had to forfeit. Um, I made a mistake with the white light rings, thinking that they worked on multi targets, and it actually severely impacted the game. So, being the nice guy I am, I went I went to Hunter. I was like, I'm going to forfeit my first the round. The nice guy. <laughs> After cheating, I'm going to forfeit my first round because I cheated. Um, my second round, my second round, uh, my opponent moved all his pieces up in a group. <laughs> what did you do, Austin? I gave them the flame blast ring and went to town. Um, in case you weren't aware about this Dark Phoenix Cyclops, on his second multi-attack is penetrating damage. So I would open with a 3-bolt, 9 range, with enhancement from Professor X, pin side precision strike energy explosion shot at his middle piece, which is Guardi, or the, the Superman from, or the Servants of the Darkness chase. Chases. Um, I shot him. That would have been the first ring I would have took from you, by the way. The two that he took was Black Light. And, uh, I think you only get to take one regardless. Each character takes one. Mm. I'm almost positive. They don't stack. Okay, well, we're going to go. I'll read it to you. They don't stack. That's what everybody was bummed about. What? I'm pretty sure they don't stack. For all friendly characters with this trait, you may remove one, not for each. You wow, only, that's terrible. Yeah, you only get to take one regardless. I mean, if you're just running Lydia, that's great, but if you're running a full team, that's depressing. Yeah, so he gets anyway, to take two. He took Minto Intensifier in that because he was hoping to mind control Dark Phoenix Cyclops and use him to kill the rest or kill Professor Xavier. Gotcha. But uh, I positioned Xavier up behind Cyclops to where he was locking down his team. So since he went for or since he went first, he moved everything up. Um, it all had one token. Xavier moves up and says, "You're clear in this turn, buddy." Cyclops says, "Boom." <laughs> Um, he goes clear, second turn, Cyclops says boom, and he scooped, and we played Star Realms. Yeah, that was my team. It was pretty... Uh, honestly, you're going to see this guy when you play Colossal events like this from here on out. He's ridiculous. Having... Um, <laughs> being able, being able slow. to shoot, and then being able to hypersonic, and deal penetrating off hypersonic... Is dumb. Is no, beyond, bro. No, you know what's ridiculous? That pulse wave. Freaking at... He does the whole pulse wave for a minimum two damage. Oh my gosh, I got so much good use out of that. Um, when he's on a running shot click, it's just like, oh, range combat action, pulse wave, running shot, pulse wave. And you're just like, boom, boom. And it was just, that's what I was doing to Jay first game. Um, what happened was I gave him white light ring, and after I pulse waved twice, I was like, you can't, you have negative four, negative two. I forgot that White Light Ring is if you target a single character, mm -hmm. because I'm so used to using it with duos. So that would have catastrophically changed the game, and since the game durations were so long, we weren't about to replay that. Drew, what did you run today for the theme teams? I ran a uh, Horseman of the Apocalypse theme Oh, that's team. right. So who all did you have on your Horseman team? I had uh, Apocalypse. <laughs> you gotta have the big man himself, I mean. Yeah. On, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh... Had Apocalypse. Had, um... Uh, uh, G03 Apocalypse. G03 Apocalypse. Who's the better one? He is the better 500 one. 500 points. How would you think about him? He's pretty fun. I mean, like... I can't, I Traded can't, shape change is very nice. Traded shape change and plasticity, by the way. It's pretty nice. Uh, he, uh... He's pretty good. I mean, especially with the book. Perhaps, like, some sort of a hammer... With that that uh that might give him steel energy and steel energy, maybe one to give him exploit, an exploit. plasticity uh, he already uh, has uh, but, uh, can be quite good uh, you can get away from him he's a beast uh I played uh Hulk from Giant Size X Men he is the best of the Horseman guys oh he's, he's a fucking he's so monster awesome. you give him Scotty's hammer. <laughs> He'll just oh god! I have yeah. fourteen attack, five it, exploit damage. Yeah, especially Possibly now that ultra heavies are eight out. eight exploit <laughs> damage. 
So I haven't played him with a resource yet. I've just played him like three or four times in regular games, and he's sick. I can't imagine him having charge on top of that plasticity and special. He's nuts, dude. Close combat action. I like his only downfall is he's got really limited mobility because he's a Hulk. But like, if they come to you, you're gonna poop all over these kids. <laughs> Poor kids. You just Hulk's just like squatting over the top of their Arch- heads. They're like, no, Hulk, no. <laughs> From the same set, Archangel. Uh, that Archangel's a monster. He's very good. Okay, let me tell you about this Archangel. And I'll. My second game was really depressing. He was playing a bunch of AVX pieces. He was playing the giant stupid dildo. He was playing Professor X. He was playing White Le- White Phoenix Hope. He was playing Scarlet Witch. So my my. <laughs> And my team was bad. <laughs> it is. It was. I beat that team with my toys first round. By the yeah, way, yeah, he he won. <laughs> He's just he had a dope. But my team was more for about you know fun. I gave him the Grundles. Is what I gave him. But uh, Archangel, like I went up against first round against uh, someone playing a bunch of Green Lanterns, and Archangel was my last character. And he, there was like literally five guys around him, and he survived for like four turns because he was on the part of the book where you get like imperv and <laughs> penetrating psychic blast. What, what's always made that archangel a monster to me, though, particularly, is that four horsemen death trigger. I've gotten so much good use out of a fourteen six top dial shot from freaking nine range away. What's also sick about the Hulk and why he's the best? Yeah, is because his. Triggers off damage, yep. not yeah. just KO. So he's like always buffed up pretty much, especially when you can free Quake with the book. Yeah, but his is only attack at least, and it's not damage too. Yeah, but his attack value is plus one until the end of the turn for each opposing character mm-hmm. that took damage. took damage. So if you get an energy <laughs> explosion and you're not playing resources that week, someone energy explosions, he's got plus three until the end of the turn. <laughs> So he charges. I love that sculpt too. Oh, that sculpt's amazing! Found it's one of, balls. It's one of my favorite sculpts. This, this is actually this might be my favorite Hulk. And uh, yeah, he probably is mine too, honestly. And the Wolverine's pretty fun. The Wolverine's really good. He doesn't need a resource. He, he honestly doesn't. doesn't. He's, He's got charge flurry exploit, then charge flurry steel energy, then charge flurry blades, <laughs> and then three clicks of freaking uh, uh, regen. Yeah, this guy. I love this piece. Like he might be my favorite. This guy might be my favorite Wolverine too. Like these, he's at least really fun. I might give him Noel's hammer, even though he couldn't benefit from the running shot, just because having willpower on something like that be yeah. monstrous. I, yeah. You don't even need that though. That's the thing. This I know. I'm saying with it, he's ridiculous. Oh, the good old days when figures were good without resources. Uh, these guys are all super rares and they're nuts. And oh, you're, if you're all hurting for that nostalgia, you can just host a no resource. Oh, and I played Gambit we from... Do, uh, we do have to have. <laughs> a really bad Gambit the from... Old, yeah, uh, the one with Perplex and Energy Explosion? Yeah. I wouldn't say he's really bad for his points. For an old figure, he's solid just because the X-Men yeah. team ability can heal. Then he has Stealth and, and Perplex. Of course Scarlet Witch took away my X-Men team ability. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. That's a smart move. That would take away his, a uh, little bit of his Did power. you run the ATA? Yeah. Yeah. But I had five people on my team. Yeah, it kicks in once you have four. <laughs> so, like, people would, like, kill, like... Actually, people went for Apocalypse first, so Apocalypse would die. And then I would have plus one tag. Everyone always goes for the Colossal first. I went, I went 0-2 because there was only two rounds and I didn't get it. Drew, why don't you lead us into a, a, a segment we haven't had for a long time? It feels like forever. The old Drew's Value, value Silver Age Corner of Value of yeah. Values. Uh, title what's, changes every time. <laughs> what's our valuable figure today? Let me take it back to one of my favorite sets. One of your favorite sets. It maybe. is. Teen Titans. No. Not a little farther back than that. <laughs> Silver Age. Just I mean, a little bit farther back than D Titans. I, I really like Ridge, and Ridge is going to be... <laughs> no, totally um, a meta piece worth every point. I remember back long years ago when Ridge came out. Okay, so... Guys are common. His name is Jason. Jason Blood. Mm. He's got a sexy little purple cloak on, which is ironic, because that's going to be what <laughs> power you're using him for, which would be probability control. It matches very nicely. Um... Mm-hmm. So for 44... I'm colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> that was the joke. <laughs> I was just making sure. I'm, for 44 points, you get Mystics, 
That's enough. That's <laughs> enough. There you go. Game over. <laughs> I'll take Mystics for 44 points. But what if I told you you get Mystics and you get Prop? Wait, what? Mystic. I get Mystics and Prop? Mystics and Prop for 44 points. All right. I can deal with this. But let's say Wait, there's let's, more. Let's tack on some survivability. Give them some energy shield. With what what kind of defense are we talking with the energy shield? 14, no. 15? Yeah. <laughs> Later down dial. But 16. 16 with prob and energy shield. So at range, he's an 18 with energy shield, prob, and he has mystic, so if you do attack him, he... this guy... Now, Drew, this sounds like a good figure, but, uh, you know, I really, I like, I like attacking from my figure or I like some ability to become an attacker some way or something if I'm going to pay a measly 44 points Hunter. for this guy. What do you, what do you, you got, there. What do you got to talk to there. me, buddy? There's a guy and his name's Etrigan. And this guy turns into that guy. Wait, he can change into an attacker? Oh, oh y- yeah. Once they get and they hit him, he can change? Yeah. After they take Mystics? Yeah. What's he? How how good is the figure that he changes into? Not does it have any kind of like good close combat thing he could just like hit back with afterwards? He could, what if I told you he could hit, somehow hit you for six? For six? Yeah, that was a forty four point figure. I know, Jesus <laughs> Christ! But he has blades, claws, fangs, a nine attack. A, isn't that combat reflexes? Uh, toughness was sixteen. Oh, uh, toughness! But he's got perplex and prob control as so well. So once you hit those final two clicks on Jason Blood, where he's kind of like worthless, you alter ego him straight into perp prob with still having mystics yep. and having blades. By the way, with Jason cool Blood. If you don't own a Jason Blood, go buy one. Hunter's got like ten, I think. <laughs> I got three, but I'm not giving any away. Because they're nuts. Because there has been times where we've played three of them. At the I have time. literally played three Jason Woods before. Now, figure this good. I'm thinking, what are we, what are we talking about? What do, you think this, uh, what do you think this bad boy goes for on cool stuff? A figure that good? He's got to be... Five bucks. He's $54. Got, he's got to be $10, right? $10, yeah. I bet you he's less than a dollar. I bet you he's like 30 cents. 99 fucking cents. There you go. And they got 17 of them left. <laughs> you heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. Go to Cool Stuff. And apparently he's only got a three-star rating on Cool Stuff, so what the fuck do they know? <laughs> That's true. That's only with two ratings, though. It's almost as bad as H.G. Realms ratings, but <laughs> don't get me into that. Oh, H.G. Oh, Realms Realm. has like a five for him. They still have Tony Stark from Iron Man 3 out of three out of five stars. I think they're just butthurt about the fact they made it up. No, he's, up, oh, to he's up to a four. Holy crap. Oh, man, he's Man. moving up in the world. <laughs> Stark's moving up in the world. We have to check. Gentlemen. At one point, he was two stars. Yeah, and it was bad. Uh, We're gonna have to check him from time to time on the podcast. How could he was it? he was two stars with like freaking? It had to have been like twenty thirty ratings. How could you vote him two stars? He's one of the best. I don't know. I don't even. That's a good suggestion, though, Drew. So pick up a Jason Blood, less than a dollar. Very good figure. Very useful. For the Mystic team ability, give your wild cards, prob control, all that good stuff. And he has mystical keyword as well, which is a great keyword. Our just a tip this week comes from a listener, and it's a very good one. And he actually sent this to us a couple weeks ago, and I accidentally deleted it. I had to go in my trash and get it back out. <laughs> Shows how much Hunter cares about the fans. No, I just it was an accident. Uh, Rodney Anderson. Oh, um, Rod says a couple things. One, the the Hal Jordan we were talking about is in fact from the scenario pack. We uh. And we already talked about that. Uh, the Greenland Ring is in the scenario pack. We talked about that. But another thing, ju- his just a tip. Unless you're quick clicks, of course. He says, don't forget that you could, you can outwit, first of all, you can outwit asset abilities off of team bases. So that is that is a very good uh, oh, yeah. thing to keep in mind. You can still outwit them. And even on the Trinity of Sin team base, which has Quintessence, you can still outwit their... Um, asset abilities, and you can still out with their symbols. Because it means Whoa. their powers can't be counted. Yeah. Huh. No. Yes. When you outwit the asset, the asset abilities state they can be outwitted as if they were powers. We're going to have to look this up. Well, I'll have to look this up. Oh, well. May, moral of the story, you can outwit them, but don't forget that you can outwit asset abilities on team bases. Yeah. And because it's... it will and it may and probably will come into play depending on what team base you're playing against. But that's just something to keep in mind. I can already tell you, like, I play villains for hire quite a bit. Like, I love that team base to death. But there's two or three asset abilities that if you lock it down with two outwits or something like that, 
would neuter that team base right off the bat. And then he has another question. I'm curious to know if Austin has started playing War Machine yet, which is what I mainly played before getting into clicks. I'm one of the only people I know who came to hear clicks from other miniature games instead of Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh. In some ways, it made it tough to swallow some hero clicks back to life, like allowing the first player free reign to pick a map that can one sidely screw over his opponent, which I think is one of the stupidest rules ever made for any game ever. Fortunately, people at my venue aren't too douchey about map selection. Usually. I, however, am very douchey about map selection. But... Yeah, I am too. Anyway, <laughs> keep up the good work, Rod. Thanks for sending us an uh, email, Rod. And Drew has been playing War Machine as well. Um, I picked up... I've been painting my models up. Um, I ordered a few extra stuff. Um, we're... The we've had a weird like gap here because usually they play on Sundays. Your mom's all, got a weird gap. Oh, it's not even nice. <laughs> uh. Go team! The, the next few, <laughs> the last few weeks uh, on Sundays we've had stuff going on. Like this week is the uh, Magic um, pre-release, so that we won't be able to play tomorrow. I uh, I actually played my first game of War Machine on Thursday. Really? Yeah. What'd you think? It's very fun. There's yeah. a lot to learn. It's uh. It's kind of like Hero Clicks, and there's a lot to learn, but uh, it's actually way more. It's like Hero Clicks, but way, way more. Um, see, I I played Warhammer 40k a bit before. Um, Price point way more too. By the way. Yeah, <laughs> um, I played a lot of 40k before. Um, a couple friends convinced me to hop into War Machine. Um, I did not. I loved collecting 40k, and I loved the universe. I did not like the price point on everything, and I did not like the actual way the game played. Um, so I've had some friends harass me, get me to pick up War Machine lately. Um, I'm playing... No one harassed you. You No, know. no, no. They badgered me about this weekly. Uh, TJ, I know you're listening to this. You badgered me about this weekly. No, he TJ didn't. was on last week with me, by the way. I love TJ. Listen, TJ is a very nice man. He is. TJ's a very nice man. And will I admit he got me into War Machine? Yes. <laughs> But, but, he's well, I admit, <laughs> but let's be honest here, Austin. Corey and I getting into War Machine had a lot to do. Yeah, that was a big push for me too. Was... With you, you know, oh yeah, it's all right. oh, yeah, these guys are doing it. I guess I'm doing it. They do, they do badger me. But I'm playing a uh, uh, Balder One, which is a uh, um, Stone Cleaver. Yes. Um, and I'm playing an Army of Golems with him. Um, my, my army's gonna be World Only, which is gonna be really fun. And what do you play, Andrew? Uh, right now, I just got random stuff. I got I picked up the battle box. I also have uh, Janessa Stoneside, who is a very hot troll blood female hunter. I don't even want to go there, Hunter. Don't even Google. I'm her. good. I don't need. Don't troll even. <laughs> and uh, I also have a uh, uh, dire troll bomber, who's pretty cool. But yeah, we we've been looking to get started on that one that's gonna be fun it'll be a fun experience at the very least for me i didn't get to play my troll bloods on thursday though i didn't bring them i gotta play the uh legion of everblight starter they've got some really fun stuff um so speaking of other games really quick we've talked before a couple weeks ago about how much we love dc deck builder uh the new version basic i guess a different version of the same engine uh, has been. It's called the Cer- It's called the Cerebus engine. The Cerebus uh, came out, and it is Street Fighter based. And we played it today. Austin got it for me for my birthday, and it is extremely good. Oh, I love it. In fact, I I like it just as much or more than DC. It's yeah. a different. It's a different play style. It's much more cutthroat. Um, you're more at each other's throats. It's a lot of attacking, a lot of defending. You're you're attacking and defending. Two times, if not three times, more than you are in DC deck building. I'd say it's even more than that. Because and you're it's comboing, you're comboing a little bit less than you are in which, DC deck building, which isn't a bad thing. There's, necessarily. yeah, there's two or three things that I've had that I didn't like about DC deck builder. One of which was cards that let you pull from your discard in a deck builder allow people to take ridiculously long turns. That's why there's a couple cards like the Batman that pulls all your equipment up. And then all of a sudden you can play your bat signal to pull another hero up that pulls more equipment out after you've played it all. And it's just ridiculous. Um, and then the fact that there's not a lot of interactability in a lot of deck builders. DC, I love DC because to a point there's a little more than usual, but it's still not enough to where I feel like we're not playing separate games on each other's turns almost. Um, this one, however, is straight out. On your turn, you're throwing out attacks at people. 
you're defending against attacks, and there's a big bluffing aspect too with some of the abilities that's really cool where it's kind of risky because if a, if a player has their ultra card in hand and you attack them, they can counterattack you, and then you can counterattack their counterattack, and you can just, oh man, me and Drew had what, like four or five cards we had to do a resolve stack for to figure out what's going to happen to each four, of us? It was four, yeah. It was awesome, and I, I like that feeling of, it gives you the Street Fighter feel though. Where, like, I'm beating up another player the whole time mm, we're fighting. There's ultras. You'll have to try it, but if if you like DC deck building, you will like That's my Street favorite Fighter. thing, is that there's ultras in the counter ultras, just like the actual game. Yeah. It's it's very good. It's it's very good. If you enjoy it, go And try if you're it. a big Street Fighter fan, sure as hell pick it up. They did uh, they used most of the Street Fighter 4 artwork for a lot of the stuff. But for the character cards, they used uh, the Street Fighter 2 artwork, which is really cool. Biggest bummer, no DJ. I yeah, know. Drew was no really DJ. sad. Poor DJ. No DJ. Alex for you either. I know. No Alex. DJ is my favorite. Oh man, like Ge- I like how each character plays really different, but they don't archetype lock. Like in DC Deck Builder, your hero kind of really determines what you're going to play. Yeah. In this, like I feel like even though my Vegas Ultra plays off villains, I could have still played just as competently with a super power deck or a hero deck or anything like that. Like I don't feel locked to my hero, which was really nice too. Moving into community, there's a couple small things to talk about for community. One, we have a question from Alex B. on Gmail, and he wants to know, these are some questions that we've talked about before, but it's been a while, so some of the newer listeners uh, may have, may not know. Uh, what is your favorite theme team to play? Uh, Drew, you want to go first? Um, Arkham Asylum, or... Gotham City or anything along those lines. Batman villains, you know, give mm-hmm. me hard. So, yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah. Just awesome. Give me going. It's hard for me to pick because <laughs> there's a lot of good ones that I've played. Yeah, there are these days. Um, there are so many good. If we're going for like my favorite one, like if it's a pretty open theme team event and I'm wanting to play to win, I'll go Avengers in a heartbeat for my favorite competitive one because there's so many good options in that. Professor. Yeah, especially not Professor X is out. That's such a dumb figure. And uh, give it to Avengers, just to, you know. And Avengers and X-Men. Two of the factions that have the most keywords in the game already. Just make another... Stop it, Whiskey. Please um, stop. But if I want to go for fun one, I think Stark Industries really takes it. I mean, there's... Oh, Jesus Christ. There's some really fun figures in Stark Industries. There's some really douchey figures there in are. Stark Industries. But there's some douchey figures in almost every theme team, as long as it's not an obscure five-figure team no one cares about. Well, Mine, uh, I think people really care about the uh, Horseman of the Apocalypse. The Horseman of the Apocalypse has some cool ones. I have several, of course. Teen Titans is is probably still way up there for me. I also play Batman villains a lot, like Drew. Um, and then uh, my other one would probably be X-Factor. And I do really, like X-Factor a lot. Well, what sucks is I used to like to play them, but there just weren't a lot of pieces to choose from. There weren't... Their X-23 was good. Wolf's Bane was good from Web of Spider-Man, the old one. Um, Warpath was okay. And then you had Cable and Deadpool. But they're so expensive, they're hard to fit on team. But War- Wolverine and the X-Men brought us be- like a lot better yeah. ones. Spiral, um, Phantom X, um, a couple other ones. Um, Shatterstar. I think, I th- yeah, I think Shatterstar has X-Force too. Mm. Um, Domino and Boom Boom are two really fun uh, X Force pieces. I play a lot too. Boom Boom, or she's called Tabitha Smith on, on the clicks. She she's a blast to play. She makes little bombs and can send them out, and they blow up like yeah. little penguin bomb type. I thing. feel like Deadpool's gonna do the same thing. That yeah, it'll Wolverine hopefully. Did, but it's gonna do it for like a the hand is the one I'm really looking forward to. Getting I'm gonna good I'm for. gonna change my answer to Superior Foes of Spider Man after this. Uh... <laughs> There's no keyword for it. Though. I know. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like and then the last one, if you could have one team clicked, what would it be? It already happened. The Winter Guard. We've got some of the Soviet super soldiers, but I really want the full Winter Guard. They have some cool powers, they're interesting characters, they're pretty minor in comics, but they're they're fun and interesting ones. Well, there's a lot of characters that are, you know, pretty, uh... But I don't think I'll ever see them clicked. Yeah, you might. Unless they do another cap set. Don't... Don't question it. Mine's BPRD, even though they technically have been clicks forever ago. Those figures are so awful. I mean, that was right when clicks started. 
The figures are awful. Not everybody got in the sex. They only did like six or so. Okay, if you had to pick Marvel or DC. So though. BPRD. Um, damn, that's tough. They could they could finish. They could Secret Six needs redone really bad, and there's still no Jeanette. Yes, yeah, there's still no Jeanette, which is huge. Um, I'm just getting all the stuff I finally wanted. You know, it's. Yeah, honestly, I would have said, said the Rogues until Flash. Well, yeah, I would have said Rogues would have been there. X Factor would have been one too, but Wolverine and X Men did the entire run of X Factor stuff. We Pitt. got we got everyone, man. Yeah, I'm pretty. I happy. get the feeling Justin Zero listens to this podcast. A Fantastic Four, right? Needs down, Fantastic Four. Give me a freaking Fantastic Four set. Fantastic Four. If you give me a fan, what will the next Marvel set be? There's I think it'll be a Fantastic, Fantastic Four set. Four. <laughs> There's nothing more for me to bitch about. I know they're <laughs> making Flash and Guardians of the Galaxy and War of the Light all in the same. But year. all the, Drew uh, needs is a new saber tooth and modern, and he's now done. all I can complain actually, about. Actually, we yeah, might get one in Deadpool. Yeah, that's now all I can complain about. Didn't is that they we say need that uh, Weapon X? Weapon X is a sub theme. So we'll probably I don't know get if it's a, a sub theme. I think we have a lot of Weapon X figures. I, I, it's not necessarily a sub theme, but, but we, a saber tooth is vi- a viable option. Yeah. If they don't do saber tooth, I'm gonna fucking shoot someone because we have a guy. We might get one of Days of Future Past. Still, we still haven't seen the rest. Last saber tooth. Is he in it? I don't know. I, don't I know just it. read it. Really, I don't think he's in that. Uh, yeah, I just reread a couple weeks. ago. I don't think he's in it. Um, if he is, he doesn't have a very prominent role. Listener guess. Last week I had TJ on and I said. You know, from time to time, I'll be having you guys come on the show whenever Austin and Drew can't make it, especially around the weeks where I'm doing my wedding stuff. I'll be recording ahead of time, and we won't be recording on Saturday. So I'll have some of you guys to uh, come in with me. And uh, that was an idea that a lot of you guys liked. A lot of you guys sent me PMs volunteering to be a listener guest when we do do that. So I got your names. Um, I'll contact you. When we do eventually do it, I don't know. You know, it'll be kind of a... I'll only be able to know four or five days in advance or so, but I'll give you guys the first dibs, basically. Contact you guys first, and then after that, we will or just... Or uh, seats up for grabs or something. After that, we'll shoot them out on Facebook. No, it's just for days when you guys can't make... One of you guys can't make it for something. Yeah, I or, think tryouts for our seats, Drew. Or on the week of my honeymoon and the week of the bachelor party or the well, wedding. Well, you already threatened to like quit, that. so... so. I threatened to quit if they were con exclusives. And they're one not. of them is... One of them is, and it's not a big deal to me. I Actually, understand. oh yeah, yeah, the white one is. Oh, one clarification I meant to make: I goofed up the other day when I said um, Black Lantern was con exclusive. I was mixing it up with uh, white with uh, Anti Monitor. Oh yeah, because the Black Lantern is on Necron, and Necron is not the con; he's the uh, yeah. the grand prize. So a lot I, of people are wondering if that means Necron's going to come with the constructs too. So I said that wrong the other day, but we'll find out. That's true. Um, YouTube. Winter Soldier rules video just went up this past week, and Yu-Gi-Oh unboxing will be going. That up was fun. Either tomorrow or Monday, probably Monday. I don't think I'll have time to do it tomorrow. We'll see how long it takes to edit. Fans wanting evidence of my luck should watch the Yu-Gi-Oh unboxing video. This is true. It's horseshit. It'll also, <laughs> it's also the first video that has all three of our uh, beautiful faces in it instead of just mine. Or Phil's. I can't wait till you go to edit it, though, because the whole time you weren't paying attention to stuff, I'm in the background doing stuff. <laughs> and then lastly, we want to do comics. These boys haven't been reading much comics lately, so I just wanted to talk real quick about a series that I reread, and uh, it's Unknown Soldier. I love that series so much. And this is the Vertigo series, not the uh, old, old, old DC uh, series. Sure, this is... Unknown Soldier? It's very good. It's by Joshua Dysart, who's done a lot of good work on Hellboy, and he's won a lot of awards for other books and stuff, too. Um, the basic premise is there is a uh, doctor... There, there's a guy who grew up in Africa, and moved, his parents kind of raise enough money. They, they get out of Africa. They're kind of one of the better well-off, but he grew up in a bad area, of course. Uh, they're from Uganda, where there's tons of civil war and stuff going on. Anyways, he gets out. Makes good life for himself, becomes a doctor, but he decides that he wants to kind of give back. So he, instead of taking a very prestigious uh, job, he flies back to Africa and uh, becomes kind of like a humanitarian doctor. Bruce Banner's it? Huh? Bruce Banner's it? Kind of. And he meets another chick who's also a doctor, who's also from Africa. Anyways, they have a good relationship. Anyways. 
They bang, you know. Something happens. I don't want to spoil anything, but I'll just say this. Something happens that trigger the in this area it's very bad like you see on other movies like blood diamond if you enjoyed blood diamond th- you'll love this series if you like the first hotel arc of rwanda Black, batwing's first arc was a lot bat of wings have you stuff. seen captain phillips remember yet? i used to say batwing reminded me a lot yeah, of that's, unknown have Taylor. you seen captain phillips yet no is that the one where they get raided by Pirates yeah it's a really good movie check it out but um if you enjoy those those movies set in africa you will love this series something happens uh, and Moses kind of snaps, and um, he kind of turns into a different person. Crazy things start going down, and there's a whole big civil war type thing. It's very badass. It is so good. It's very good. The art's really cool. It's it's a really weird style. It, it looks. It's not like realistic and crisp it kind looking. Of, it kind of has like an old school. It has a Kirkman, a Walking Dead style look to it. Eh, it more looks to me like a little abstract, like yeah, it does, some yeah. kind of weird art style that you would maybe see on drawings on old blankets and mosaics and shit. I don't know how to describe it. You just have to see it to see what I'm talking about. Actually, it feels a lot like Hellboy, which Dice Art worked on. It, it has that weird style, that different, unique style. But um, very recommended. It's on, There's only four trades of it. I think there's 25 issues. I just reread it. Unfortunately, that series didn't sell well enough, even though it won lots of awards. Um, it didn't sell well enough, and they had to cancel it early. They did. They, they did wrap it up. They though. did wrap it up pretty well, but they wanted to. There was more. I see where uh, at the end there of the third. There were some third, plot holes. And yeah, stuff at the like end that. of the third, there was a lot of there was a lot of of storylines that could have went with from there, and they just kind of wrapped it up pretty quick. But the ending is also really badass. So There's, definitely, it's, it's good plot twists. It's a great overall. Like it's an interesting story, and the characters have good growth and everything. It's very different. It's not your superhero yeah. typical. It's very good. I highly recommend it. I would recommend it to absolutely anybody. Like Winter this. Soldier, check it out. Or not Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. <laughs> Unknown Soldier. Uh, I was waiting for you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so be sure, also, guys, uh, send us any any questions, comments. If you want to do adjust the tip like our friend did today, or if you want to just ask us a question, anything. Such as our friend did today. Send us an email at dialh4heroclicks at gmail.com. You can also check us out on Facebook and talk to us there. A lot of you guys PM us or talk to us on our post there. Uh, It also is dialh 4 Clicks and on Twitter as well. Main thing, be sure to follow us on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel. Again, we'll have a Yu-Gi-Oh! unboxing coming up very soon. You can see all of our pretty mugs and Austin's amazing luck. Yes. Until next week, this is Hunter signing off for Drew Alderson and Mr. Austin Smith. Later.